From prominent haunted hotels hosting humorous spirits to ominous river crossings used by more than just the living. According to its many local legends, the bold new city of the South is absolutely overflowing with supernatural oddities and paranormal terrors, backed by an exceedingly intriguing history. We've wanted to look into this one for a long time now, and what we've discovered in our research hasn't disappointed. Prepare yourselves. It's time for some of the most haunted places in the city of Jacksonville, Florida. Here we go. Number 5. The San Marco Theater The San Marco Theater is a single-screen drafthouse movie theater located right off San Marco Square in none other than Jacksonville. Impressively, the San Marco consistently ranks on top tens as far as premier classic theaters still in operation throughout the United States. It was originally planned and constructed by renowned architect Roy Benjamin. Benjamin had the theater completed for opening by 1938, where it was used to showcase a range of groundbreaking productions. Impressively, it has served this purpose ever since. In 1997, the property was purchased by David and Sue Blue, who immediately set to work on much-needed renovations as well as a host of modernizations. The theater's original 500 seats were replaced by a much smaller number, around 224, with the extra space being utilized for personal tables. To accompany these luxuries, a food and drink service was added. We're not trying to make you drool, but this service went far beyond normal cinemas of the time, offering pizza, quesadillas, gourmet sandwiches, beer, and wine, which major corporations are only now catching up on. In January of 2019, the very year of this upload, David and Sue Blue sold the theater in a joint deal to four local residents. The new owners have made clear their plans to retain the theater's original and beloved appearance, aside from a much-needed paint job and the addition of even more tasty food and drink options. If you're looking to dip your toes in the realm of paranormal investigation, the San Marco is a great place to catch a flick. The building is said to be haunted by the ghost of the former manager, who died in his office overnight. Local legend claims that dying on the job, and not in the comfort of his home, caused his soul unrest. His full-bodied apparition is commonly sighted around the premises, seemingly continuing his life's work from the other side, attending small tasks, or even greeting the living. His ghost is said to most often materialize in and around his old office, with many reporting hearing someone unseen rummaging about. Also reported throughout the theater are eerie, shadowy apparitions said to dart about, usually after dark. Some of the first reports of these strange silhouettes led many to believe the manager's ghost and these spooky specters were one and the same. But in recent times, investigations have yielded that whatever these things are, they definitely aren't the old manager. And on several more frightening occasions, staff members or those who stayed behind just a little too late have reported being literally charged by these chilling things. Lastly, and confined to no area in particular, many at the San Marco Theater report disembodied footsteps from empty areas, electronics commonly malfunctioning or going dead completely, and even objects moving on their own, even floating through mid-air shocking any nearby before dropping suddenly to the ground. Number 4. The Dames Point Bridge Dames Point Bridge, or officially the Napoleon Bonaparte Boward Bridge, is a cabled suspension spanning the width of the St. John's River through the heart of Jacksonville. It boasts its impressive title as one of the largest cable stayed bridges in the entirety of the United States. Planning for the platform began through the 1950s for the purpose of nothing simpler than a more efficient crossing over the powerful river. Construction was initially intended to start in 1970, but due to economic issues, construction was put on delay. It was finally initiated a whole 15 years later in 1985. The process took four years, the long-anticipated bridge finally opening to the public in 1989. The ever-impressive Dames Point Bridge stands an astounding 1,300 feet and towers nearly 471 feet over the St. John's. The Dames Point was built to stand the test of time, and as such, rather amazingly, no maintenance was required until as recently as 2007, when it was decided that all cables were to be repainted. The crossing carries I-295 over the St. John's, and with its sturdy history, should be doing so into the foreseeable future. 
Tragically, in its short history, a number of deaths are said to have occurred on or around the bridge, either due to horrific accidents, suicides, and even murder. Over the years, a number of reports from motorists traveling the bridge, as well as those brave enough to actually walk it, have led to rumors that the bridge may be holding on to the restless souls of the many lives lost on its desolate expanse. These reports include inexplicable cold spots in the middle of summer, the eerie feeling of being watched or followed, and strange fogs seen on the bridge alone, floating with seeming cognition. A number of those investigating the bridge after dark report a strong feeling of dread, some describing the feeling as so strong they have to will themselves not to turn their vehicles around or run in the other direction. A range of full-bodied entities have been sighted, most morbidly replaying their own deaths. One of the most commonly cited spirits here is said to be that of a woman, who was thrown over the edge by an unknown attacker. Her spirit is most often sighted on the northwest side of the central support, nearly smack dab in the middle of the crossing. Those who've witnessed her report watching her flailing, screaming in terror as she seemingly hoisted into the air by unseen but powerful hands, and tossed from the side into the darkness below. Number 3. Public School Number 4 Public School No. 4, or the Annie Little Elementary School, is an abandoned schoolhouse located near Riverside Park in the Brooklyn neighborhood of Jacksonville. It was originally constructed in 1891 as Riverside Park School and consisted of nothing more than a small wooden structure. It was rebuilt to accommodate modern needs in 1918 and reopened as Riverside Grammar School, but was officially listed as Public School No. 4. In 1950, in honor of a notable former principal, the school was renamed to Annie Little. Following its renaming, highways were laid nearby. It's said that through the remainder of the 50s, the noise level was so high that many of the students and even faculty members found it unbearable. Important lectures often lost, drowned out by the sound of rushing cars. Traffic also cut several important routes to the school, making its location highly inconvenient. After a rough last few years, in 1960, the old schoolhouse closed its doors for good and was left abandoned. The building was used for storage for a time, before its condemnation in 1970. In 1995, a large fire caused portions of the roof to collapse, and in 1999, the ruin was considered for demolition. Thankfully, the community stepped in, the city later labeling it as a historic location and worthy of preservation. The building has been completely taken over by nature and, aside from routine volunteer cleanups, remains untouched. Today, the entire property is fortified behind a fence, off-limits due to safety concerns. But this hasn't stopped a number of youths, local daredevils, and even paranormal enthusiasts from breaking in. In. Much of the structure is covered in graffiti, and several rumors claim the old remnants have been used for occult purposes over the years. Recent plans suggest the structure may be turned into condos. Sounds like a great idea, right? Over its lengthy existence, a slew of stories concerning paranormal occurrences have sprouted up. So many, in fact, that the grounds have earned the local nickname, The Devil's School, and are said by many to be one of, if not the most haunted place in Jacksonville. One of the more famous legends surrounding public school number four, and one that's most definitely reminiscent of a certain dream-walking, knife-glove-wielding Hollywood serial killer, tells the disturbing story of a cannibalistic janitor, or, in some renditions, the principal of the school, his or herself. In all versions of this legend, it's said that the killer would drag kids down to their secret lair, a boiler room, where they would proceed to torture, then eat their victims. Other tales spread through generations tell that the school was rented out by a corrupt Catholic order whose principal would kill any students who stepped out of line, or that a furnace exploded, killing half of the students attending. The stories go on and on, laced with a severe lack of actual physical or historical evidence. This hasn't stopped reports, however, and many skeptics have, surprisingly, experienced inexplicable happenings from within public school number four, ranging from consistent malfunctions with electronics to full-bodied apparitions of varying descriptions. A number of reports entail ghostly faces popping up in windows or mirrors, startling all nearby orbs caught in the background of videos and photographs, and disturbing EVPs, sometimes heard in the background of phone calls made from within. 
Common to many haunted hotspots, shadow figures are often sighted across the premises, darting quickly about and passers-by have described watching in awe as various doors and windows begin frantically opening and closing on their own in the middle of the night. Lastly, and possibly most disturbingly, several reports detail the disembodied sounds of groups of children playing around the deserted yard, as if life for them is continuing somewhere beyond the veil. Little laughs, giggles, strangely off-putting yells of joy that slowly fade into nothingness. Number 2. Casa Marina Hotel and Restaurant Casa Marina, or more locally, The Grand Lady, is a historic hotel located in Jacksonville Beach, just east of Jacksonville, that boasts various claims shared between such titles as best beach vacation destination in Florida, all the way to most beautiful place to hold a wedding. Casa Marina originally opened its doors in 1925, the same year Jacksonville Beach was officially incorporated. That's right, this one's got some serious bragging rights. From 1939 to 1945, through World War II, surprisingly, the hotel was repurposed for military housing. What a place to kick off your boots. Following the war, the building was passed through a string of owners who utilized it for a variety of purposes, including a prominent apartment complex, an extravagant restaurant, and even a clothing store. Sadly, business began to decline, and by 1980, the building had closed its doors. It was left abandoned for years, tested against time itself. In 1991, however, it was repurchased with the intention of being reopened as a premier destination once more. After its extended vacancy, Casa Marina was in need of a serious rework. Renovations, modernizations, and remodels took nearly 10 years in an effort to better revive its original 1920s glamour. It serves the public today, offering 23 rooms of pretty luxurious proportions. The hotel has hosted a number of notable guests, including Presidents Harry S. Truman and Franklin D. Roosevelt, the notorious Al Capone, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, actress Jean Harlow, and even John D. Rockefeller. Local legend tells this old inn may somehow hold on to previous guests who have since passed on, and a number of reports over the years detail a wide range of inexplicable happenings, including disembodied footsteps throughout the halls and courtyard, strange shuffling sounds heard from empty rooms above guests, and an apparition seemingly made of watery mist, often sighted descending the south staircase. Disembodied voices are heard often across the property, especially by staff members who have described hearing names called from the kitchen or work areas when no one else is around. And a number of guest reports detail phantom wafts of cigar smoke coming from empty rooms where smoking hasn't been allowed for many years. The most famous apparition haunting Casa Marina is said to be that of comedian Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle. It's said Fatty stayed, dined, and drank at the hotel often in life and held a strong affinity for the place. An affinity so strong, in fact, it caused his soul to return after death. The ghost of Fatty is said to be a troublemaker, causing various forms of mischief across the premises, enjoying the humors he did in life. On several occasions, both guests and staff have reported watching Fatty materialize simply to lock individuals in various rooms, even crossing through connected walls to turn out the lights, leaving them in total darkness, as well as consistently trying to trip any attempting to climb the main stare. Impressively, this apparition has so much control over its environment that on several occasions, guests have actually reported standing from tables to find their shoelaces tied in knots. Another apparition, that of a man in striped pajamas, has been sighted wandering the halls and court in the evening, a cheery look on his face. Several stories tell he's either a guest who died in his sleep or a former manager who loved the hotel, but we may never truly know as whenever he's approached, he's known to quickly vanish from sight. Disturbingly, guests staying alone at Casa Marina often report receiving disturbing phone calls to their rooms. Some met with deep, guttural breathing on the other end. Normally, we would chalk this up to prank calls if it weren't for the handful of instances in which guests unplugged their room phones entirely and continued to receive the calls from the disconnected phone. 
Lastly, and most horrifying of all, in a strong majority of these cases, guests who have received these eerie calls report waking, suddenly, in the middle of the night, hearts pounding, drenched in sweat, a feeling of unshakable panic upon them, and most describe the sensation of something else, something not human, near their bed, sometimes accompanied by that same growling rasp through the dark of their room. Number 1. The Kingsley Plantation The Kingsley Plantation is a former plantation located off the northern tip of Fort George Island in Jacksonville that now, under the watch of the U.S. National Park Service, acts as a historic monument and pseudo-museum, if you will, displaying the land's history as well as some of the history of the surrounding island itself. Fort George Island holds signs of life dating back far beyond when it was first settled. In 1765, Richard Hazard established the first plantation on the island. Later in 1793, ten years after their takeover, the Spanish government awarded the land to John Lightning McQueen. McQueen set to work constructing a large home, which was completed in 1797. Unfortunately, soon after its completion, he went bankrupt and was forced to give the plantation to John McQueen. Macintosh in 1804. A decade later, in 1814, the luxurious abode was leased by one Zephaniah Kingsley, who fell in love with the property. He purchased in full three years later in 1817. Zephaniah's wife, Anna, was a former slave. While Florida was under Spanish rule, she was safe. However, when the U.S. took control of Florida in 1821, the family was forced to move back to Haiti where they could live in peace. In 1839, Zephaniah sold the plantation to his nephew, Kingsley Beatty Gibbs, who held on to the old home until 1852 when he sold it to an unnamed source. Following the Civil War, the island fell under the operation of the Freedmen's Bureau, where emancipated slaves could live and farm the land. In 1869, when John Rollins purchased the entirety of the island, drastically transforming it into a luxury resort where profit could be made from a newly constructed hotel while his family enjoyed the quiet life from the nearby plantation. Things changed in 1888, however, when the hotel burned to the ground. The Rollins family continued to farm the land until 1849, after which their daughter held on to the property until 1923 when she decided to sell. The old plantation was used as a private clubhouse for a time, until the Great Depression hit, ending interest in high society. The Florida Park Service took over most of Fort George Island in 1955, transforming it into the Kingsley Plantation State Historic Site. In 1967, efforts were launched to restore the home to its original appearance. The mansion, though slightly smaller than it was in its glory days, is open all week long, offering a number of tours to any interested in doing a little exploring. While this isn't one of the most famous haunted locations we've ever covered, just look at it. It literally looks like the classic haunted house, and rightfully so. Over its impressive existence, a number of reports have sprouted up from the Kingsley Plantation, leading to many local legends that the mansion is housing its fair share of ghosts. One story tells that one of the males in the home, in some renditions a slave, would rape, abuse, and even murder female slaves across the property. After a time, however, the other slaves found out. They confronted, beat, and then hanged the rapist. Many report hearing the tortured screams of the women he murdered to this very day, especially near the old slave quarters, as well as stifled shouts and a small commotion just off the property, thought to be the short chase that preceded his well-deserved end. The spirit of the rapist himself has been sighted on numerous occasions, a dark entity with glowing red eyes. Though his appearance is usually quite startling, it's said he has no power or ability to harm the living. But that hasn't stopped him from trying, with many detailing terrifying instances in which this demonic entity gives chase, easily keeping pace with speeding cars, or even materializing in the back seat. In recent times, this spirit has been dubbed Ol' Red Eyes. Also reported across the grounds is a beautiful woman in white, usually sighted near the porch. 
The spirit is believed to be the ghost of Anna Kingsley herself. Her identity is up for speculation, however, as whenever the living approach her, she's known to vanish, leaving an unnatural chill in her wake. One local legend tells that a small child died after he or she fell into the well, and a number of visitors report watching ghostly children playing near the area, as well as finding small, bare footprints in the dirt or dust throughout the old home. Also reported across the grounds are disembodied footsteps, orbs caught in photographs, and strange mists seen floating the halls with seeming cognition. Shadow figures are commonly sighted slinking between rooms, especially near the slave cabins, and many report electronics including phones, cameras, and the like going dead almost instantly upon arriving to the property. Lights flicker, doors have been known to slam on their own, and many report objects moving or literally floating through space, as if being interacted with by an unseen force. Lastly, the entity of a man donning traditional African clothing has been sighted throughout the main house. Not much is known about this presence, but he's said to bring a feeling of calm to any room he materializes in, before vanishing nearly as quickly as he appeared. With the overwhelming and impressive number of hauntings reported throughout this positively ancient home, coupled with its fascinating and often violent history, it's no wonder we chose the Kingsley Plantation as our pick for the most haunted place in Jacksonville. Thank you everyone for tuning in to our list of picks for the most haunted places in Jacksonville. If you enjoyed listening to our stories as much as we enjoyed telling them to you, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you know when fresh content is coming out. Click that like button down below and share this spooky video and our creepy channel with anyone you think could use a little scare. We'll see you next time.